with the lift pin. We typically make our first cuts facing towards the back of the vehicle from the front of the G-post. That way we can cut into the post and hope we catch the actual cylinder for the lift piston and vent the gas. Once we vent the gas out of it, it's no longer a hazard. Then we can come back here and cut without worrying about this thing picking up a hit. Okay? Go ahead and make a cut. Okay. Hello everybody, welcome back. Jeff again, coming to you from the Minecraft, Minecraft Vanilla Server. And uh, since we last left off, there's been some things that have happened. And you can't see them yet. <laughs> I don't know if you uh, get the drift of what that means, but yeah, you can't see them yet. Either way, since the last time we left off on things I can show you is check it out. Thanks to the wonderful people in the comments, especially to BTA, good buddy BTA. He's a really nice guy. I like that guy a lot. But he um, helped me solve the problems here with the automated pumpkin harvester by sending me some screenshots of exactly where I had gone wrong, which allowed me to fix it. So what you'll notice is if I don't have one right there, if I get this pumpkin from over here, and I place it here because right now all these pumpkins can grow and nothing will happen. If this pumpkin right here grows, it triggers the whole system. So yes, there'll be some times when only one pumpkin gets harvested. And there'll be some times when multiple pumpkins get harvested because it's all based on this one. See, so those two grow. Now, if I'm going to simulate one growing here by just going like that. And there they go. They see they disappeared as well. That is because the whole system got triggered. Down here, I have, it's a little bit messy, but I made it work the way I wanted it to work. Whoa, I almost screwed that up. I have this mine cart that goes around the track. It has a hopper in it. It will pull the pumpkins. You're going to sit down here. It's going to pull the pumpkins from here. And what it does is it goes down here every single time. And it detects on if it has anything in the mine cart. And if not, it sends it back up. And because of, you know, track configurations and all, it just keeps running. Once it gets something in the minecart, this is an automated unloader. It'll stop here, unload it, and see, there we go. I got a random piece of cobble in there, but I got three pumpkins. So it's just going to run anytime I'm in the area and the area is loaded up. So I have an automated pumpkin harvester. That's not 100% efficient. It's not perfect by any means, but that's what it does. That's how it works, and it is there. And what on earth is down here? <laughs> this must be the chest that was used when creating the polar bear. That is hilarious. Um, he just kind of used one of my creeper holes to hide a chest. I guess he didn't really need to hide it in, in, in case I logged on. I guess he'd run away, but it's not like this is an evil prank that is uh, that is bad or anything like that, but this is where Arcus must have stored the supplies for Jeffrey the polar bear. Doop. That is that is funny. I, uh, I did not notice that until I caught that at just the right angle. I do need to get some snow and get this area all filled in and finish terraforming this whole region, which I've kind of stopped doing for a while because it's one of those things that I don't know how much you guys want to watch me doing that on camera. Um, and since I don't have much time when I'm not recording to play, I've stopped it for a while. I think we made some good progress, but I might do some more episodes of this on camera. 
Somebody did suggest that I go over and I finish Connect 4 is what they said. So I'm not bringing supplies with me over there, but I'm going to go check it out because in my mind it was pretty much done. However, I haven't put any signs on it to let anybody know what it is. And I brought some signs with me, so will I at least go mark it and show people what it is and what it could be? I guess it could be prettier, so I feel a little bit bad that it's not the most beautiful game but it was it's a very simple game and it's there but i would love if i uh, happen to be on line when somebody else is online and we have some time to just play some <laughs> games of connect four. Oh, i was gonna replace the glass that's right because you guys had informed me that since i used glass panes they were gonna make a connection and i never got more glass to replace that with so i do still have to do that i guess it's not done oh and i was gonna build this out somehow that's right ah so i do still have some work to do on this thing that i completely forgot about but in the meantime i can at least say connect four there at least people will somewhat know what it is despite the fact that it's not like beautiful and pretty but i like it it works connect for reset rest switch reset switch it's a hovering sign of course it is i just love watching this funny car go Bing. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. I wish I could cover this thing up more. Um, I do need to put some fences around it. You guys right. You're always right. I wasn't done. I guess I'll throw some fences around it right now since we're here. Because I I don't have anything planned. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. I, I guess you should expect that from me by now. Um, that I'm not necessarily going to always have plans when i jump onto the server i just uh i'm out here having a good old time man oh so i'll tell you i finished my rescue tech class this week and i i've talked about this on the channel before but some of the tests that they give us through the fire department are some of the most ridiculous tests i have ever taken in my life and i am not kidding this was one of those tests that they definitely expected you to read the book so like perfectly because all the questions were literally a specific line out of a book which is exactly what test bank tests are which gets really annoying i think i've talked to you guys about test bank tests before i don't like test bank tests at all because i don't believe they actually test a user's knowledge of things what they end up doing is they end up testing can i put a fence not like that i gotta hit this button again and hope it doesn't screw up so hopefully hopefully this still works uh when you when you take a test bank test that pretty much takes a line out of a book it's it's not judging whether you know the content or not when it when it tests you what it's testing is if you've read the book to a T to be able to pull out one little line that might not have anything really major to do with any of the uh, any of the content. And this test was so difficult that because it, it was just so specific on things that weren't what we really discussed for the and it was mainly a practical course. It wasn't there was only one day of lecture and then there were six days of uh, full days, full eight hour days of straight up practical work working with um, Jaws of Life and things like that. If I remember, I'm going to throw a video on. So hopefully you all already have seen the video at the beginning of this. Is just us doing a little bit. Because I got a little bit of recording in during the class. But I think I got a, a good video of us doing some recording with the, uh, the Jaws of Life. And uh, cutting out the back end of a, uh, of a car through the, through the C pillar. Actually, it might have been the D pillar on this car. Because uh, I can't remember how many, how many pillars it actually had. But... Either way, it was one of the back pillars, and they were talking about the the hydraulic spring opening for the the lift gate on an SUV, and how when you cut through it, it can make a popping sound and an explosion sound. So you got to be ready for it, and don't don't let it freak you out because it will kind of be like 
worse and it could be like very well scare you if you're not prepared for it and ready. But either way, this test, what it was, was these specific like one liners out of this book. This book was 12 chapters long and each chapter was approximately like 50 pages. So, I mean, it was not a small book and they gave us a quote unquote study guide for the test at the very beginning of class. And what the study guide was, what it showed you week by week, all of the possible, um, the, the, subjects that you were going to go over that specific week and the chapters out of the book on which those subjects would come. And all it said was like week one, chapters one, two, three, four, five, and six. Week two, chapters three, seven, and nine. Week three, or, like, or class three. And it, like that's exactly what it did. And unfortunately, it said the week six or week eight or whatever the final week was for the final exam, it was like, Chapters 1 through 12 is exactly what it said as the study guide. What do you need to prepare for for this week? The entire book is essentially what it said. And in these classes, you know, I know we're supposed to. Everybody knows you're supposed to, but people don't read. They don't just sit there and read the text. They hope that you're going to teach them a lot of the information that they, they need to know. And we walked out of this exam and the first thing that came out of one of the guy's mouths is he looked at the instructor and he goes, so what day are you scheduling the retake for this test for? Because it was that difficult of an exam. Luckily, we all did pass. Um, you have to get a 70 to pass and you have to get a, if you don't get a 70, if you get above a 60, you can retake. And if you don't get above a 60, you fail. You just automatically fail the course. And you can retake once if you get a, uh, somewhere between a 60 and a 70. You can retake one time, and if you fail, then you're you're done. Fail again, don't get a 70, you're done. And if you pass, then, then you're, you're fine and you passed. Luckily, he got word before we started doing our practical portion of the exam. He says, I just got word. Everybody did pass the written. He goes, one of you passed by the skin of your teeth with a 70%. And he says, I can go, you know, in if you guys want, I can go get the test before you guys leave and everybody can have what, it, you know, what their score was. And all of us cumulatively just said, you just, you're telling us that we all passed. Somebody passed with a 70 on the nose. We don't care who it is. It's not a course that you get a grade in. We don't get graded based on GPA in this course. It is a straight up pass fail. And we all collectively said, nope. We don't care. We don't care who it is that got the 70. We don't care who got the highest grade in the class. We know we passed and we were very, very happy. But it's nice because now I have Rescue Tech certification, um, which is the branching and stepping stone for one for promotion to Fire 3. I need one more class and I can get promoted to Fire 3. But then I can go start taking things like Swiftwater Rescue now because I'm done with Rescue Tech and other rescue classes, which will be cool. But back to this test. I am not kidding. And I wish I could remember exactly what the test question was because I can't remember the exact question off the top of my head, but I stared at this question for like five minutes just in bewilderment that they could possibly ask a question like this because it said something about apparatus placement on a... On a car wreck for extrication is for or is a always going to be acceptable or always going to protect rescuers okay first rule of test taking don't choose an always anything that says always that's too much it's, it's too much information you're not going to get the you're, you're not actually getting what you need out of that question it's uh you it, the answer is not going to be always B, never adequate to protect rescuers. Another rule of test taking, never choose. That's iron, isn't it? It is iron. Never choose a never. So right off the bat, based on just test taking skills, you don't choose the, oh, that's quartz, damn it. I need to go get more. Yeah, I think I need to go get more snow in order to do anything else. Um, so never choose always. Never choose never. So test taking skills, I already just eliminated A and B. C was sometimes adequate. And D was 
often adequate to protect rescuers. And I was like, literally did one of those, what? So your answers that you're giving me to choose from are, A, it's always adequate to protect rescuers. B, it's never adequate to protect rescuers. C, it's sometimes adequate to protect rescuers. Or D, it's often adequate to protect rescuers. I'm baffled. I'm baffled at this point because I have absolutely no idea if how you're quantifying the difference between an always, a never, a sometimes, and an often answer. That is some ridiculous test writing that I cannot believe that any organization would be able to get away with. I mean, how are you supposed to answer that question? I, I mean, I understand from the scheme that you shouldn't be answering the always or the never because those are obviously the wrong answer. But how do you justify the difference between often and sometimes when those aren't exactly definitions that were, it's not like those were definitions that were covered in the book. I didn't sit there and read the book and the book was like, the difference between often is often means this, whereas sometimes means this. Somewhere in the book, I guarantee there was a line that probably said, in my guess, I passed, so, I mean, everybody passed, so everybody might have thought the same thing. I figured, okay, we have a specific apparatus staging for a reason. You're supposed to stage your big vehicles, your big, your engine stuff on a car accident. Let's say a car accident on a big expressway. You stage your big apparatus, your engines, your towers. You stage them behind the accident scene, blocking lanes of traffic to drive traffic around where you're going to be working. And then you stage your ambulance and your transporting unit in front of the accident scene with, you know, the hell, as far toward where the blockers are blocking as you can. So if you're blocking like the left two lanes so that nobody can get around on the left side, you're going to put the ambulance to the left side where it's blocked the most and most protected and most away from a lane of booming traffic. But so you have a, an, a, a spot of egress. So once you make the transport decision and get the patient loaded up you can have an egress you can have an exit to leave with the patient and go to the hospital and you're not stuck by the blockers you're not stuck by the big backup of traffic that's going on things like that my guess is that it's often adequate that's why it's our sops our, our standards of practice because it's often going to be adequate but at the same time it's still sometimes adequate because that's also kind of one of the definitions of, you know, the way things are going. I guarantee there was a line in the book somewhere that talked about apparatus staging and it said something to the effect of just straight up. It was like the way we block apparatus or the way we stage apparatus for, you know, blocking during an extrication is often adequate to protect rescuers. I'm betting it said that line somewhere in the book. I just have absolutely no idea because I didn't read the book in that fine tooth comb mode uh, maybe i should have maybe it's my fault hey i still pass so I, I can't really you know be that upset about it but that's when i look at tests like that it, it kind of it makes me sad because as an instructor you know i teach a, a class through uh through nursing um in one of the nursing programs online it's an online class about computers and computers and healthcare i mean it's my forte it's kind of what i what I do and I teach this class and when I first took over teaching this class I mean multiple other instructors teach it as well but they used straight up test bank tests that people had to online tests that people had to take and one of my biggest arguments from the beginning with the other instructors was let's get rid of these tests these tests aren't helping people it's a test about what to do in excel like what does this button on the toolbar in excel do I'm like that's not really helping these people learn what we're trying to teach them that's just trying to like drive into their head a specific little icon that they may or may not ever use because people don't always use the icons. Often people use menus, use shortcut keys. They know their ways around it. I didn't know what half the buttons were because I never used the buttons. They're new buttons since I learned Office, you know. But and these, so these tests were very specific and very hard and people actually did very poorly on them because of that. And I, I ended up winning this battle because other people shared the same vision I did. It wasn't just me going like, oh, I don't like these tests. Other people were like, you're right, but we need to get something else to replace them instead. So we made more practical versions of exams. So instead of them taking an online multiple choice exam now... Um, at these parts of the class, we put together a little bit more elaborate of a 
of a you know a homework assignment that they have to do and turn in um but it's like turn in a word document that utilizes you know this type of font and this type of picture art and blah 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 you know whatever they learned in that you know chapter that they were dealing with is is how they're built now which is you know more it's practical it's more it's more geared toward actually enforcing or reinforcing what you've learned not just if you can read a book that's you know the the instruction manual for Microsoft Office and so I get very like upset when I see tests that were written like this because I, and I've taken a lot of tests through you know the, the fire department here in Montgomery County and and even the instructors sit there and they tell you and I mean they warn you ahead of time they're like look this is a MIFRI exam which means it's the Monk or it's Maryland it's a state of Maryland exam it's not just our Montgomery County where I'm a firefighter at there so like it's the standard MIFRI exam so it's going to be a lot more you know test bank type oriented you guys know how those exams are and we're like yes we do so you know we know that it's coming but wow just you're going to throw in the terms often versus never. And I don't even know if that was the exact way the question was worded. It's very similar to the way the question was worded. Um, but I, I was extremely concerned that I had not passed this exam because it was that specific and oriented like that. But luckily, it's over. But you guys got to be prepared for that in the real world. I'm just telling you, when you get to college, if you're in college now, if you've already been through college, even in high school, probably they're using a lot of uh, test banks now because it's it's part of a standardization process, which makes sense. They want everybody to be tested the same. They don't, you don't, you shouldn't get a better grade and have a better GPA than somebody else just because somebody else's tests were harder it's nice to standardize, but it's difficult to, you know, standardize when it is kind of detrimental to the learning process, essentially. Like, I, I don't know. It's That's my thoughts and opinions on, on things such as that. But either way, it's been a long week. First week in my new job. Uh, I haven't been home, like I said, in about, oh, I don't even know if I told you guys. I was talking to somebody else right before I did this. But I haven't been home to my house in 48 hours because I, you know, have been working all week and was at the fire department yesterday and straight from work to the fire department, straight from the fire department back to work this morning. So I'm pretty, pretty tired and beat, but it's been a little while since I've gotten a, a video for you guys. So I wanted to make sure I didn't neglect you too much longer, though, as I've, I think I've stated in the past, videos aren't going to probably be as often as they are, but I'll do my best. Have fun with this. Um, but like I said, there's a video that's going to be coming out at some point soon because there's some things I can't show you yet, if you guys get what that means. So stay tuned for that. Press that like button, guys. really helps me out. And stay tuned for the next episode of Minecraft from the Minecraft vanilla server. I'll see you guys next time. Cutting through the seatbelt mechanism, that's why we're having